Good morning, everyone. It's a true honor to be here today. As Eileen mentioned, my name is Adriana Casillas, and I recently graduated from Antioch University New England's Conservation Biology Program. So today I will be sharing with you the research that I conducted for my master's thesis. Human carnivore conflict is a serious threat to predator populations and human livelihoods on a global scale. And perhaps the most widespread type of direct human carnivore conflict deals with livestock depredation. Across Africa, livestock production is often one of the most important options for viable income. Consequently, when carnivores kill even a few livestock, people may be faced with substantial financial impacts, which may lead them to respond with lethal control and retaliation. This situation has been of increasing concern, leading many projects, especially in East Africa, to install lights and fortify homesteads with chain link in efforts to reduce conflict. However, very little scientific evidence exists on the sustainability of these methods. Soon after I discovered this gap in our knowledge on this topic, I set out to test the effectiveness of two different light systems as potential predator deterrents. I also examined actual versus perceived conflict because it is often perception of threat that drives retaliation. I conducted this study in partnership with Action for Cheetahs in Kenya within Mabai Community Conservancy. Mabai covers an area of about 116,000 hectares, largely composed of arid savanna habitat. This area is home to many important wildlife species, including two endangered, the African wild dog and the grevy zebra. And it is also home to over 12,500 Zamburu. This is an aerial view of a traditional Samburu settlement or homestead with its outer wall and livestock corrals constructed of thorn brush. It is a simple design meant to be easily dismantled and portable being that over 90% of the people living in Mabai live a nomadic lifestyle. And so these homesteads were the focus of my study. For the first phase of the project, we conducted 30 household interviews across southern Mabai, with one respondent per household. We mentioned to everyone that we approached for interviews that participation was voluntary. And so we asked for verbal consent before actually moving on to the formal process. The questions were both open and closed-ended, and they were designed to examine previous livestock losses, perception of conflict, and actions taken to protect livestock. Following these interviews, we selected nine of the initial 30 homesteads for the second phase of the project. And this was, these were based on a set of criteria, which included the presence of an outer wall, which suggested that families were already taking preventative measures to reduce conflict, as well as the highest number of reported livestock losses during the interviews. The nine selected homesteads were then divided into three sets of three. Within each set, we had two experimental homesteads and one control. We installed what is called a grad lead system at one of the two experimental homesteads and a fox light system at the other. So first I'll just talk about the grad leads. This system was composed of 12 light bulbs on PVC poles, a battery, and a solar panel. We set these lights about two meters off the ground and evenly spaced along the inside of the outer wall facing outward. We also had to dig a trench all the way around the inside of the homestead to bury all of the wiring between each of the 12 lights and the central battery. And this was to limit disturbance from livestock and overexposure to weather. The battery was then stored inside of the interviewee's home and the solar panel attached to the rooftop as you see in that photograph. The Fox light system was a bit easier to set up and that's because it was composed of one battery operated unit secured onto a steel pole. And the pole was buried about half a meter. We also asked families to add thorn brush to the base, again, in efforts to reduce disturbance from livestock. The homesteads that received this treatment, they had two fox light units, one on each side of their property. 
And once these were set, they stood about three meters off the ground, so a bit higher than the other system that I just showed. Neither of these systems was motion sensing. They both turned on at night and off during the day, with the light projected from the, or the light produced from the Fox light projected at 360 degrees, whereas the GRED LEDs had blinking lights. All of the homesteads were monitored for 27 consecutive nights. We placed an average of 10 infrared motion sensing cameras along the outer perimeter of each homestead. Again, facing outward and at about knee height. And we also set them to operate from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., so just overnight. We also placed two walking transects, one at 15 meters and the other at 30 meters, circling each of the homesteads. And this was to ensure that no sign of predator presence was missed, being that all cameras have a limited detection range. So this is what the entire setup looked like within a set of monitored homesteads. All of the cameras, along with their corresponding 15 and 30 meter points, were designated a zone. And these zones were created solely for the purposes of facilitating data entry. When we were reviewing memory cards and filling out our transit forms in the, in the field. It just made it easier to, having these zones made it easier to know where we were standing when we were out there in relation to everything else and thus where the data was coming from. All right, so what did we find? Everyone that we approached for interviews agreed to participate and they all indicated having livestock losses at night in the last year. A total of 262 livestock deaths and 91 injuries were reported, with three-fourths of those uh, reports being attacks on sheep and goat combined, or shoats, as we often refer to them together. The total financial damage that this translated into was a little over 32,000 US dollars, or an average of $515 per household. When we asked families, what is normally done to protect livestock? Strong fencing and keeping guard dogs were the two most common responses. However, we did encounter many homesteads with very low fencing, about less than a meter, and large gaps along their outer wall. And dogs were sometimes reportedly killed by the same predators that were taking livestock. And so these two methods to keep livestock safe don't seem to be very effective on their own. The spotted hyena and leopard were the two most problematic nocturnal predators reported, with spotted hyena said to visit nightly and leopard monthly. When comparing observations at control sites, which represented normal conditions with perceived visitation, we found that jackal visitation was underestimated. And actually, jackals during the interviews were reported as daytime predators. And so it is likely that although we did capture them on the cameras at night at various homesteads, that if they're not causing any disturbance, this could be a simple reason why people might be unaware of their presence at night. Spotted hyena visitation, on the other hand, was overestimated. And we think that this could be due to hyper-awareness of risk shared by the community, being that all participants had mentioned spotted hyena as a major problem. Striped hyena visitation was also overestimated, although there were no reports of them taking livestock. And leopards were not spotted at control sites, but they were seen at fox light sites. Treatment type and species visitation were strongly correlated. This figure shows visitation rate per hour. And as you might notice, overall activity doesn't seem very different between the fox light and the control sites. But when you look at the grad LEDs, species visitation was significantly reduced by about a third when compared to the other two treatment types. However, it's still too soon to say that the grad LEDs is the solution to human carnivore conflict in Mebai. 
because of the two systems, the gradlets is the least fitting to local livelihoods. And the reasons for that are because of how labor intensive it is to set up and how much maintenance it requires afterwards. It was also the most expensive of the two systems. So unless this system was somehow simplified, it doesn't seem like the best fit or the best option for the Mabai community. Again, despite its performance and it's also its interest from the community members. We had a few families living adjacent to our grad-led sites say that we had shifted the normal path taken by spotted hyena and caused conflict at their homestead to increase. But bringing this system into the community seemed to do more than just affect wildlife behavior, but human behavior as well. Because on one hand, the people that showed interest in having these lights installed at their homestead, while they were maintaining their walls, the people in our study that already had the lights, they stopped maintaining theirs. We had one incident where a spotted hyena entered a fox light site and killed two goats. After talking to the family the next morning, we realized they had not properly closed their entrances that night, except for that small branch you see back there in the photograph. Now, this was the only livestock attack during the entire study period, but the event suggested that the presence of lights might not be enough to keep carnivores from coming into homesteads and taking livestock. It was also a lesson of how critical it is that there is clear communication between the researchers and the community members you're trying to help, but the importance of them continuing with their traditional customs and not overly relying on a system that you're introducing, especially when you're in the experimental stages and unfortunately can't guarantee that attacks like these will stop. The issue of habituation is also still a concern because even though um, carnivores weren't as frequently seen at grad lead sites, whenever they were seen, they stood very close to the camera, which was less than about half a meter from the homestead wall. And so to conclude, I first want to recommend researchers who might be planning on testing any kind of deterrent to ask themselves these questions beforehand. For instance, will the system be affordable and accessible to the community? How heavily will people depend on you or your project to make sure that the lights or the system, that whatever system you're introducing is always working properly? Do you suspect that this system might affect the community's culture or traditions, and is it locally acceptable in general? It is also important to think about the species of concern, the species that you are targeting with this introduced system. And lastly, will the benefits of you bringing in this system into a community outweigh the potential risks? In Mabai, although there is no known documentation of pastoralists' families actually persecuting these species, conflict exists nonetheless and must continue to be addressed before the situation worsens. Being that spotted hyena was the most persistent carnivore species, having a better understanding of hyena movement patterns, including how much time they spend near homesteads, would be very beneficial in identifying high conflict areas. Also determining the environmental and or human factors that may be facilitating hyena access to livestock could help in designing better deterrence in the future. This in combination with the continued and active support from the local family, support and participation from the local families will be very important moving forward to reduce conflict in this part of Kenya. At this time, I would like to thank everyone at Antioch who supported me in my project, ACK for partnering with me, my sponsors, my family, friends, ASM for bringing me here, and all of you for listening. So, thank you. We do have time.
time for a few questions for Adriana. Anyone have questions? Yeah, Tom. Sure. What was the significance of the blinking lights? Was it um, to save energy on, on the battery, or was it more to do with turn? I think it was just the, that was the manufacturer's choice. I don't know that there was actually a reason to have them blinking. Um, and the other one, like I mentioned, also just turned on at night and off during the day. So neither of them were motion sensing. Um, so that's something that we were, I was talking about with, the, with Action for Cheetahs, about you know, why these lights are made a certain way. But I don't know that from the manufacturer's side that there was actually a reason for that. I don't know that it would save energy since they would charge, the, the grad LEDs charge during the day because it had a solar panel, so I'm not sure. Additional questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that was, the blinking system was developed by some kid in Uganda that talk on it, but are there other systems, like it seemed like that system was a lot, like many more small lights, almost like Christmas tree lights mm -hmm. around. Are there other systems you know about that might be more portable and easy to maintain? Right now, I, I know of two other systems. They're called night guards and predator guards. Those are more port portable, more mobile, that, and they don't require any wiring. Um, they're at about pr um, predator eye level, so they're lower to the ground than either of these two. The only problem with those is that the light that they produce doesn't reach very far out. And we didn't test those. Action for Cheetahs think did a pilot study a couple years ago on those. And so those were probably even less effective than, than these. Last question, yeah, Elmer. So is there a possibility that the lights might actually attract the predators? That's a good question. I, I'm not sure, actually, the, one of the interesting things about the study was that we didn't see leopard at control sites, but we did see them twice at two different fox light sites. We didn't see them at grad lead sites either. Um, I don't know that the fox lights attracted the leopard. I think part of it was the location where that homestead was, was established. It was right at the base of a rocky outcrop, which is really good habitat for leopard. So I'm not, I, I don't know if, if, if it was the lights that were attracting that leopard, that specific leopard.